like Andre Woodson, Keenan Burton, Stevie Johnson, and Raphael Little roam the sidelines here in Lexington. They are excited here at Big Blue Nation. Today they take on Youngstown State, a couple of 2-0 clubs. Of course, the Penguins out of the FCS. And a pleasant good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to a gorgeous day here in Lexington, Kentucky. I'm Dave Niels, former Ole Miss great Deuce McAllister joining us. And, and Deuce, obviously, you've been in games like this, these early games coming off big wins like Florida had or Kentucky had at Florida last weekend. From a player's perspective, the mentality you got to have to get ready for a game like this, I think it's kind of tough, a little different. Yeah, it's definitely different. I think, you know, the biggest thing is just trying to stay on routine. That's probably the hardest part. But, look, they're, they're an experienced team. I mean, they, they have a lot of veteran leadership, and that's who they're going to lean on. They're going to lean on some of those veterans to be able to get them through as far as particularly early in this matchup. Well, it was such a great weekend, a great night down in the swamp for Gator, uh, for, I should say, Kentucky football fans as – the Cats went in there, did not back down one bit. How is this team ranked in the top ten right now? Well, I think it's a quarterback. I mean, and he has some young receivers outside. You look at this defense, they're opp opportunistic defensively. I mean, they can get pressure on you, but also they can turn you over. And then once they do get those turnovers, they have the ability to be able to take it to the house, and that's one of the things that you saw them do there. Well, certainly this is a team led by their quarterback, Will Levis, who put on another great performance on the road last week, trying to bring the energy here today as well. For more on his story, let's go down to the sidelines, check in with Andrea Carter. Thanks, Dave. Well, I had a talk with Will Levis earlier this week, and he said the team had so much confidence going down into the swamp. He said, you could tell by the way Coach Stoops addressed us all week long. We knew we were going to take care of business, but he reminded me that after the season Kentucky had last year, beating Florida is not the end goal. That is just a a step in the right direction. He said he wants this program to take the next big step, and that is winning the SEC East, playing in Atlanta, and being in the college football playoff conversation. He said we have to take care of business every week. Yeah, Andrea, he is not bashful about the goals he sets for himself that he sets for this team. And obviously today he feels like he has to really kind of lead the way for Kentucky to make sure they come out of the gates firing on all cylinders. Now they're taking on a Youngstown State State team. This is a group that uh, from Youngstown that certainly has some interest from the Kentucky sidelines, a handful of coaches from Youngstown. But Doug Phillips now in his third season as the head coach of the Penguins has led them into the top 25 of the FCS level this year. They have dominated their first two opponents out of the gate, garnered some tension, attention at that level of football, and he's excited. He, uh, a Youngstown guy as well, kind of grew up around the Stoops family. A big game for him and his team today, but they will have their hands full for sure in the first ever meeting between these two schools. Youngstown State won the toss, they defer, so Kentucky will get the football first. I mean, you couldn't have drawn up a prettier afternoon for some college football than we have right here in Lexington. Youngstown State, their first two games came out firing. They beat Duquesne 31-14. And they last week knocked off Dayton 49-16. They threw for six touchdown passes as a team. A school record for the Penguins. So we are just about set for some football. Colt McFadden will kick it away for Youngstown. Barry and Brown, the electrifying freshman to return the kick. At a 100-yard return against Miami of Ohio. And now Will Levis will come back on the field as the quarterback for the Kentucky Wildcats. And, of course, Will this year, the 6'3", 230-pound senior, has put together a nice season the first couple of games out, going for over 61%. 505 yards, four touchdowns, two interceptions. And something we'll see with this offense here in 2022 is maybe pushing it downfield a little bit more than they have in the past. Dave, that's one of the things that they want to use, that, that speed that they have on the outside. We'll start with a two tight end set. CA Smoke, the running back, will fake it there. And they'll try to go deep down the middle. Pass is caught. Dane Key had a huge touchdown grab down in Gainesville over the weekend. Comes up with the first reception of the game for 23 yards. And you'll look at it, it's off the play action, so you basically have that deep square and a nice job by Dane Key being able to get inside uh, of the defender. And nice throw as well by Will Levis. 
First down at the 47-yard line. In motion goes Robinson. He'll come near side with it with smoke. And he is bottled up for a loss of about four on the play. Woodkey came up with the play, the sophomore out of Miamisburg, Ohio, making his 16th career start with the big play for that defensive front for the Penguins. Strength of that defense, front seven, according to their defensive coordinator, Jamal Brown. Smoke motions out of that backfield, empty set. Smoke near side makes the catch in some space. Walks on a defender and gets it close to the line to gain about a yard shy. He's at the 43 yard line of Youngstown State. A pick up a 14. Really nice job of the offensive line who was out with, without Tayshawn Manning at right guard. You have Quentin Wilson filling in for him, but nice job up front just giving Will Levis the time to be able to find his man, Smoke, down the field to pick up close to a first down. So third down and one. Kentucky on the year. Just 28% on third downs. Levis runs into some trouble and he's dropped. Back at the Kentucky 48-yard line. Woodkey with his second tackle on this opening possession, but that is the biggest, a loss of nine, and that'll force the Wildcats to punt it away. Well, a nice job by Woodkey, just not getting outflanked. You could tell right away Will Levis wanted to go in the flat to the running back, just a kind of a halfback shoot type of design play, but the defensive end never really crashed hard enough for Will Levis to get his eyes down the field to be able to get the football off. And, Big tackle for loss for that defense. Woodkey with a second sack of the season. Good fellow will punt it away. Rush comes, just does get it away. A high end over end kick. Fair catch called for at the 16. So Youngstown State will have their opening possession backed up inside the 20 yard line. Here comes an interesting player to watch today. Demetric Crenshaw. The sophomore out of Pinkerton, Ohio. Five touchdown passes last week. The young man was recruited by some big time power five schools, including being in interest from Kentucky, Louisville, Cincinnati, Boston College. Kind of a, a guy that was known as a runner, but he's trying to develop into more of a passer Maybe that combo game. Yeah, and if he can get the football down the field, I think that's where they're going to have some success just because he does have the ability to be able to run the ball for sure. Jaleel McLaughlin is another guy in this offense that has transferred in from Youngstown State, started in Division II at Notre Dame College and just lit up the D2 level. But had a chance to transfer out, found Youngstown State, and hadn't missed a beat. This young man is among the best in the FCS. He is averaging 10 yards a carry right now. He is dropped there. Right about the 18-yard line, J.J. Weaver. Lost down to the play by J.J. Weaver and Deion Walker. It will bring up. You talked about McLaughlin being able to really have a lot of success here. You can see those linebackers and safeties be able to get involved early on and really take away some of those cutback lanes that you're normally going to have, and they're just not there so far early. Looks like they've got 12 men on the field right now for Youngstown State. Boy, you were looking at a third down. Local player huddle with level players or more. Five yard penalty. Third down. Scott Walker, our referee today. So that'll back him up inside the 15, back to around the 13 yard line. So you go from about a third down, seven and a half, eight to third 13 now. And you want to be careful here. We saw when Florida got backed up, had some. Obvious passing downs. Kentucky took big time advantage of those situations. Hand off right side. Lockman dancing around, trying to turn the corner. It's going to be close to the line to gain. Needed to get out around the 26. They're going to spot him at the 25, I believe, but there is an injured cat down. Jordan Lovett runs him out of bound, but an injured Kentucky player back around that far hash mark around the 18 yard line. Kentucky player taken up on the play. Number 13, J.J. 
Weaver. So that's J.J. Weaver. J.J. had such a good game last week with nine stops. Career high for him, but he looks like he is in some pain. As he's being attended to, we will step aside back in a moment. Well, you hate to see that. J.J. Weaver, it's not a, a lower body injury. You've been favoring that left side, somewhere shoulder, elbow area. And, and, and here's, here's watch 13 in blue and just kind of got rolled up on. And it's hard to see. Maybe he got that right arm kind of twisted awkwardly. We'll try to get an update as soon as we can on J.J. Weaver. So the Penguins punted away. Robinson with a fair catch. So Kentucky will have it at the 32-yard line. First drive, stopped around midfield, and had to punt it away. And there's a look at the man is now the winningest coach in Kentucky history. Mark Stoops just surpassed last week. The legendary Paul Bear Bryant now in his 10th season running this show. And boy, does he have this thing humming along right now. Smoke and he is dropped. Penetration up front. Well, that defensive front right now giving Kentucky all they want. That time Griffin Hope comes up to make a play. They one of the strengths you talked about it was that front seven, and you could just see him win, winning up front, and that's what you have to be able to do. Griffin Hope, who has been a playmaker in his time as a starter for this Penguin defense, showing up early for this defense. Hope, the junior, started 21 straight games. Really the leader of that defense. Four tackles last week. Four-man rush. Levis over the middle. Pass is caught. That'll be a first down for Kentucky. That one goes to Marion Brown. His fifth catch of the year. Just a nice route by Marion Brown. He's running that little square in route. And does a nice job of being able to get his shoulders and eyes around to the quarterback to locate the football to pick up another first down for this Kentucky offense. First down and 10 for the Cats. On the left side with it. Right on his first carry of the day, the redshirt freshman out of Louisville. Five, second and five coming up for Kentucky. It's the first positive run play that they've had so far. You know, Kentucky right now working the left side of that offensive line, running behind that group. Two tight ends in. Well, Wright stays in at running back. They'll go with Wright. Lost forward for about a yard, yard and a half. Right has 14 carries, 37 yards coming into this one, obviously with the injuries to Juton McClain and Ramon Jefferson, and obviously the absence of Chris Rodriguez here for the first month of the season. Ravel Wright in the mix, getting some carries. Of course, Rodriguez expected back in a couple of weeks in the SEC opener against Ole Miss. Feel sorry for the Rebels. <laughs> That's going to be an angry man. On the football field, on third down and four. Cats looking to throw. Pocket collapses, and again, Levis nowhere to go. They contained him and then dropped him. Anthony Johnson, the first one there. Devin Lee comes in to finish things off. A loss of three and another sack well, for the a, Penguins. Yeah, it's a blitz, and it's a stunt up the middle. And, you know, like you talked about, Dave, they did a pretty good job of picking it up. There was no one free. But down the field, they also did a great job of covering those receivers and Will Levis really had nowhere to go. He tried to step up in the pocket, and that's where they were able to disengage those offensive linemen and come up with the sack. Got 12 men on the field, and I think Youngstown is going to call a timeout. You had a defender to run out on the field, and that Time gave out. him 12. Youngstown State. 
Their first charge time out of the half. Well, that's the second time they've had a substitution issue today here in the first quarter. So we'll take a timeout with them. 7.30 to, do, to go, opening quarter. State scoreless here in Lexington, Kentucky, two possessions and on the field to punt it away for the second time. It has been a good start for this Penguin defense. They have already forced four tackles for loss, including a couple of sacks on the opening two drives for Kentucky. So Colin Goodfellow will punt it away. Low snap, gets this one away. Boy, it's a good kick. Fair catch called for at the five-yard line. So again, Youngstown State backed up. And here comes this Kentucky defense. But for the moment, they are without J.J. Weaver. For more on that, let's go down to Andrea. Yeah, Dave, got word from Kentucky's training staff. J.J. Weaver has been taken back into the locker room. It's been labeled as an upper extremity injury, and he is doubtful to return. All right, thanks, Fred. It's tough. I mean, there it is. You see him 13 in blue, top of your screen. Just got knocked to the ground and rolled up on. And let's hope it's nothing too serious. So there is Brad White, the defensive coordinator, having to make some early adjustments in that linebacking core. He'll go to McLaughlin trying to turn the corner. He does so. Man, does he have some quick speed around the edge. He almost picked up a first down on third and 13 in their last possession. He has the burst. I mean, and it, you can see it. And if he can get to the outside, that's where he just is able to just turn it on and turn it up. And so a couple times earlier on a couple possessions, he was trying to get to the outside. Kentucky did a good job of keeping him bottled up. But the last two runs he's had, he's been able to get to the edges. Second and short. Looking to throw over the middle. Pass is dropped. Jacquez Jones right there to bat it out of the hands. So a third down. Stuff. Kentucky was flailing their arms. They were trying to change things up. Youngstown State, a little confused. The next thing you know, we got a flag, and Penguins will be backed up five. All start. Offense, number 71. Five yard penalty. Go down. Maybe they start under center, and so, you know, you you hold those guys in there for a long time as far as your offensive linemen. You're talking about an experienced group. So it's, he is, uh, you know, Johnson has the least amount of starts across the, the board for that offensive line, but it's third and short situation, and now you put yourself in third and medium, backed up, where this crowd can get involved. Hand it off. No room to run there. It'll be fourth down. DeAndre Square stepping up to make the play. The super senior playing in his 52nd career game today. Really good player as well for DeAndre Square. I mean, he's able to really do a lot for you in the run game, but obviously in the pass game as well. Patty Lynch to punt it away. The senior out of Australia. Averaging 48 and a half yards per punt. He'll stand on the C in the end zone. A couple of steps forward, and Kentucky got a piece of it. Cats will have it. An excellent field position inside the 30, down around the 26-yard line. Dave, I think the punter got a little greedy. I don't think that he... He was looking for everybody to kind of leave, and once they didn't depart, he was going to try to punt it. And you know, that, that's a gamble. Great job by almost like a defensive stage, but they hung around just to make sure that the kick was made, and he did not make it to late. And so Kentucky was able to get a piece of that punt. Right. Looked like Martez Thrower. Able to get up in there and hang with it. Yeah, greedy might have been a good word to use there right there, Deuce, for that punter. Patty Lynch, here's Smoke off the right side. Cuts it back, best run of the day for Kentucky. It'll be first 
down around the 13-yard line, a gain of 15. Really nice job on this counter by your tight end. Brendan Bates does a nice job on the counter run. And first time that you see Smoke be able to get really to the edge, that run defense had been good for the Penguins early. First time that Kentucky's offense was able to get to the edge and pick up a first down. They'll run it left side, but no room there. Boy, the pursuit to the football, pretty impressive by Youngstown State. They had four white jerseys chasing down Cavassier Smoke. Loss of three. Yeah, trying to run the split zone there, just way too much penetration. You see that defensive line there winning those one-on-one -on -one battles against that Kentucky offense. is intercepted around the two-yard line by Jacobek. The sophomore corner steps up with his second interception of the year. Jacobek does a nice job of running this route right there with Barry and Brown. And he just undercuts it. He undercuts it. He's able just to jump right up underneath it. And Will Levis, he does a good job of coming to him. But as a receiver, you've got to be strong and not allow that defensive back just to undercut you. And just does a nice job of being able to get that interception right there at about the three-yard line for that Penguin defense. Well, Youngstown State has six interceptions in a little over two games. They had nine total interceptions last year. Hand it off. Rushed it on that carry. He'll get it out close to the 10-yard line. A gain of six. His first carry today. From the offensive philosophy, at some point, you have to try to stretch this field a little bit. You know, we saw them pass one time over the middle to the tight end, but at some point, you're going to get to one-on-one uh, -on, -one on the outside. If it's a hard play action, you've got to try to take a shot. You've been backed up all game. Pressure comes from the edge. That ball is just thrown away by Crenshaw. He kind of felt it coming. Pressure came from the outside from Carrington Valentine. Yeah, you had a corner cat right there, and your, your tackle, uh, Jason Williams, does a nice job of being able to try to pick it up a little bit, but there was not a conversion. Crenshaw decided to go away from the pressure where the safety would have been covering the receiver if he had a cane to the side where Valentine came off of the edge. Youngstown State can't get out of the shadows of those goal posts. Another third down, backed up inside the 20. Flag is down. And again on a third down, another penalty against Youngstown State. It's the third straight time All this starts. has happened. Offense, on third down as well. Half the distance to the goal, third down. Well, we talked about Jason Williams, and he, he flinched. He's early as far as on that snap right there, and, you know, whether it's crowd noise or just trying to get a jump on that defensive end. You talk about it on third down, being able to back yourself up, and, you know, that, that makes it tougher on a play caller because there's only so many plays that, that you have, but when you're backed up, you want to protect the quarterback and not give up points as well as far as the safety is concerned. Off will only gather a couple of yards. Jones comes up there to make the play, so it'll be fourth down, and here comes that Penguin punt team again. And all three times, as far as third down, they've run the football. You know, and I understand that the long down the distance, you don't want your quarterback holding the football, but all three times, as far as third down, they've decided to kind of be conservative and run the football. Matty Lynch will punt it away. His last one was partially blocked. Three and a half to go, first quarter. Nice snap, good catch, and Kentucky almost got that one again. 
Here goes Robinson. Splits a couple of defenders and another short field coming up for Kentucky at the 35-yard line. So we'll see what Kentucky can do with it on this possession. 3.07 to go, first quarter. SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. So Kentucky forces another punt for third straight time, and now they have another short field at the 35 of Youngstown State. Here's Smoke off the right side, breaks a tackle, stays on his feet down at the 28-yard line. A gain of about seven. Johnson in on the play. Nice job of first down run, power play right there behind the right side of the line, and your tight ends do a nice job of opening that hole up for him. And Vashe Smoke is able to pick up about six or seven yards on the first down. Smoke ran for 80 yards on 14 carries last weekend down in the swamp. Came in with 112 total yards rushing. Sets up a second down at about three. What a big gainer off the left side, inside the 20-yard line. And Smoke will pick up 10 more yards. Really, really good block by Horse and your left tackle down on the double team. He's able to come off, and you have your tight end that's coming over to be able to kick out as well. And that's physical Coach Stoops football. That's how he wants to play it. And then the other part of it is that play action game where you can push the football down the field. The big blue wall. Kind of rebuilding it here in 2022. Sean Manning, by the way, starting right guard. Nursing an injury. Here's Lutz running to the right, trying to find a little bit of room. It does get enough. Keon Freeman pushes him out of bounds around the 15. Give him three and a half, maybe four, when it's all said and done. Pretty good job by the Penguins defensively, just being able to cover that bootleg play. And you saw Will didn't try to force anything. He didn't try to force the issue as far as trying to throw it down the field. He said, hey, look, I'll keep this one. I'll pick up some positive yards here on first down and get us in second and manageable situation. Smoke to run. Devin Johnson, the middle linebacker, coming up with a hit. Loss of the yard. Nice job, Devin Johnson, just being able to scrape. You get tight ends coming over, trying to kick out it. He's that Mike, Mike backer. He's just able to make a play right there at the line of scrimmage. Levis, three out of four, throwing the football. 50 yards, does have that interception. Bell Wright checks in at running back. Third down and seven. Goes underneath, Robinson with the catch. Hurdles and is dropped at the one yard line. Did his best Superman impression, but fell just shy of the goal line. Just shy of it, but you see the athletic ability just being able to, he's in a one-on-one -on -one situation and he ends up running just a slant route. They do a nice job of picking up that pressure that the Penguins tried to bring, but see him leap over a guy that he is just short. Robinson is of a touchdown. So the senior transfer from Virginia Tech now with his 29th consecutive game with a reception. Setting up Kentucky. Second quarter football on the other side. As we get set to start the second quarter, but Kentucky looking to change that as they sit first and goal at the one yard line. Five plays, 34 yards. And here we sit. Levis will go under center, high formation. Right is your tailback. They'll hand it to him. He gets popped at the line of scrimmage. Blow him did. Might have lost a half a yard in the process. 
That'll be another tackle behind the line. I think that's six already for this defense. James Jackson, first one there. Yeah, just a really nice job of being able to beat some double teams. And you see a couple guys being trying to pass off as far as they run that lead play. And just too much penetration by that Penguins defense. Now Smoke back in the game and running back. Straight handoff to him, sticks his nose down, and he'll be just shy. They'll spot him a few inches outside the line, so third and goal. We're going to say his knee was down because it looked like he was able to stretch that football out across that goal line. Have a referee right there at the end at the goal line, I mean, because he stretched it out, but yeah, his elbow and knee was kind of down. Quarterback keeper Levis will just take it himself and finish off that drive and Kentucky is on the board. Will Levis said, hey, look, running backs, I tried to give you a couple opportunities to score, but I know how to do this. I can keep this myself and go behind my center, Eli Cox, and get the football finally into the end zone for the Wildcats. Eight plays and 35 yards, a little over four and a half off the clock. <laughs> Ruffalo's point after is up and good, so Kentucky leads it seven to nothing. Cats have had outstanding field position today. They finally take advantage. It was a short run for Will Levis. The one that produced a touchdown and the Cats lead it here in Lexington. All right, thanks, Peter. 7-0 Kentucky out in front here. This has been a story of field position for sure, and Kentucky winning that battle. Hey, don't forget our stellar SEC football lineup rolls on today, 4 o'clock Eastern. You get to see... Number two, Alabama hosting Louisiana Monroe. 15th ranked Tennessee against Akron. 10th ranked Arkansas taking on Missouri State. And Beamer ball. They're at 7 Eastern over on SEC Network Plus. And we cap the night with 18th ranked Florida taking on USF down in the swamp. 7.30 Eastern on our SEC Saturday night contest. Of course, every game available is being app so you can watch anywhere. Feel sorry for Louisiana Monroe this weekend. Alabama might have a little uh, a can that they want to open up. They'll dump it off to the ball, but he will make a man miss and get back to the line of scrimmage. It's a tough matchup when you talk about a team uh, like Alabama. You, you, you're the next opponent where they don't play well, but they're still able to pull it out. They even, you know, I think this may be the best field position uh, that the Penguins have had, you know, just starting at the 25, and you end up really losing a yard on that play. Well, the average field position, Youngstown State, this is their fourth drive. They're starting their averages throughout their own eight. Kentucky's average starting field position is their own 49. Well, second down. Well, just nowhere to go. Kentucky swarming to that football. Maybe a yard. Yeah, just way too much defensive team speed right there by Kentucky. And you're able to keep him inside. It's a nice job. Your corner Smith being able to come up. And they do a good job of just reading the quarterback of Crenshaw, what he wanted to do and taking that away. And, and there's really just nowhere to go with the football. Great job by the true freshman, Alex Afari, the freshman out of Cincinnati. Taking on a blocker and making a great play. So another third down and relatively long at 11 yards. The Penguins are 0 for 3 on third downs. Hand it off in the block, and he is hit right in the hole by Jacquez Jones. The old miss transfer, a couple of those. Keith Smith 
and Jones both played for the Rebels before coming to Lexington. And another fourth down coming up. And all four opportunities as far as attempts, they've been long down in distant situations. Youngstown State, they've elected to run the football. And they're 0-4 as well in doing so. Patty Lynch will punt it away. Robinson back at the 33 to return it. And a nice return on his last attempt. It takes this one out to the 45-yard line. There is a flag down around the 33-yard line. We'll wait on that flag. Right on the edge, and looks like they're going to be backing up. During the return, holding, receiving team number one. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So that'll back Kentucky up. They will spot it at the 23-yard line when we come back. Deuce, hard to argue with the rushing defense presented by Youngstown State today. Yeah, it was uh, advertised as really, really good, and you can see them be able to create tackles for losses. They're winning the one-on-one -on -one situations with a lot of stunts and slants as far as up front, and been pretty good so far. They came in in the first two games. They held Duquesne to 51 yards, held Dayton to 55 yards. They've allowed just 1.77 yards per carry through two games. You see what they've done today. It's just been a matter of short fields for Kentucky. And now the Cats back on their side of the field to start this drive at the 23-yard line. Let's not see. Let's see if they uh, decide to take the top off of this sooner or later. Good coverage deep downfield, but there's Key wide open, breaks a tackle. He's into Youngstown State territory. Griffin Hope drags him to the ground, but the second catch by Key. Well, I love the decision here by Will Levis. He wants to hit this post. He is looking, but you see him see that that safety gets deep. He resets his feet, and he's able to hit the underneath or the dig route right there at the key. Just an outstanding job of seeing that safety get deep, so he takes away that post, does a nice job of hitting Dane Key on the over route for the first down. Rich Gangarello, the offensive coordinator in his first year in Kentucky, was talking about how Dane Key is just so precise in his route running. Levis, boy, nowhere to go. Pocket finally collapses. The ball may have been, came yeah, out. Yeah, the well. way that Youngstown State's reacting, it looked like that ball might have been free for a moment, but Levis comes out of the pile with it. Yeah, that, third sack. Third today. sack, but you see them bring a little bit more pressure. They try to run a stunt. Kentucky does a nice job of being able to pick it up, but just really know where to go with the football. And Will tries to climb up in that pocket. Like you talked about, fortunate enough to be able to recover that football. It looked like it came out just briefly. The Youngstown defense is giving them fits at certain times. Seventh tackle behind the line of scrimmage today for Youngstown State. Bringing some more pressure. Levis coming near side, looking for Key, who is quickly becoming his favorite target here in 2022. Trowers on the coverage, but Key with a seven-yard pickup. And one thing that you have to do, you have to be able to respect the speed of those receivers, and Key is one of those guys that, you know, if you're going to bring pressure, you're going to leave those corners in a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations, and at some point you know that they're going to break one. Four-star wide receiver, top 30 in the country. At his position, coming to Kentucky. He looks like he is SEC ready. On third down, Levis to dump it off underneath. As is tied in, Keaton Upshaw. He'll have the first down. Boy, somebody missed something. He was wide open. Nobody within 10 yards of him, a gain of 13. Well, one of the things you see is both of those backers, they engage in the A-gap, and nobody is able to pick up the tight end. And I love what Will Levis is able to do here. He keeps his eyes down the field. And once he saw that his tight end was going to be open, he's able to just upshaw his open. He's able to check it, check it off to him, check it down to him. And he's able to pick up that first down. All set to the 32-yard line. Coming near 
side with it. Here's Robinson. He's hit at the 28. Drop right there. Give him a gain of five. Trying to get outside of that defense. You've seen them have a lot of penetration and tackle for losses inside. This time they're able to get outside of that defense with Robinson. Try to use his speed a little bit. They've had to kind of bring him into the running game a little bit without Rodriguez. Juton McClain, Ramon Jefferson. He had four carries last week down in Gainesville. Quick hitter. Covered well there by Youngstown State. Woodkey with another stop. Six of those already for Dylan Woodkey. And he's been all over the field. He does a nice job of just reading the slip screen. You have that pressure again in the A gap, and so your linebacks are right, right now pressuring the quarterback and Woodkey, he's able just to track down, down the line of scrimmage and make that tackle on that slip screen. Woodkey also has two and a half sacks today. So that's a pretty good start here in the first half. Third and five. Kentucky three out of five on converting on third downs. Levis on the run. He'll have the first down and more. He's to the 10, to the five. Big collision around the three-yard line. Jordan Trowers came up and hit him, but it'll be first and goal coming up for Kentucky. Okay, that, that run was a first down, but Robinson does a nice job down the field for his quarterback as Will Levis was able to escape and break the... Be able to break that pocket outside and does a nice job of just tucking this football. And you see how he is a physical runner right there at the end as well. He gets hit low and high, but he still is able to hold on to the football. First and goal. Levis to throw. Quick hitter to the inside, and it's caught. The Cats on the board again as Dane Key comes up with the touchdown reception. His third of the season. Just a nice job. It's really a whip route. He sells it that he's going outside, and he's coming back inside. I mean, you've got to have some hips to be able to run this route. Does a nice job, and that was one thing that the coaching staff talked about is how precise he is as a route runner, and you see it there just to be able to sell it like I'm going outside and then a quick turn to get right back inside. Eight play drive is up and good. Best drive of the day for Kentucky. Looked in sync, got a big run from their quarterback, Will Levis, and the freshman, Dane Key. You know he's on Will Levis's radar. Thanks, Peter. 14-0, Kentucky out in front, 6-10 to go before halftime. Touchback in the end zone. Dane Key comes up with his third touchdown catch of his young career. It's almost like he was born to be wearing this blue jersey. For more on him, let's go down to Andrea. Well, Dave, you're absolutely right. Most people might say that. You mentioned earlier that Dane's father, Dante, played at Kentucky, but his brother, Devin, played at Western Kentucky and is now with the Kansas City Chiefs. That is Dane's hero and role model. Dane said that Devin plays safety, and he always tells Dane keys that make things hard on defensive backs, and they work on conditions and route running together. He said it would be a dream to play on the same NFL field as his brother one day. Well, he's off to a great start in his career. The first Kentucky true freshman to start at wide receiver since Keenan Burton back in 03. Thank you. Well, <laughs> second down coming up for the Penguins. Yeah, it's the first time that we've seen them actually run the quarterback. A little power there for the quarterback to try to get him going. From offensive standpoint, they're, they're still looking for their, their first first down offensively. Second down and six. Catch is made. First down over the 40 to the 43 yard line. And for the first time today, the Penguins out over the 40 yard line. 
nice job just a slant route. Bryce Oliver does a nice job of just being able to show himself as far as his numbers to the quarterback. Pick up their first first down of the day. Try to throw again, and he's hit and gets it away. And there will be a discussion about intentional grounding. The question is going to be, did it get back to the line of scrimmage? There's a receiver in the area. Was he outside the tackle box? And it looks like they're going to give him the play and not call intentional grounding. You see the strength right there of Crenshaw. He's got to get rid of that football, but nice job, Jordan Wright, on that pressure. He's got to get rid of that football a lot, lot sooner. Oh, yeah. One of the only time that we've seen Kentucky bring pressure. And Laughlin nowhere to run. Hey, we'll be back in eight seconds. So Kentucky's defense looking at another third down. They have played well on third downs today as Youngstown State 0 for 4 on third downs. Grinshaw just 2 out of 5 for 11 yards through the air. Youngstown has really been conservative on third down, choosing to run. Got to get it going here. You play clock run right at 3 seconds. No flag. So off to McLaughlin. Timeout. Youngstown call. State calling timeout. The previous play is under uh, further review. So no timeout, and we'll take another look. You know, looking at that, the fumble. Are they trying to take a look at the fumble? Thought that they had blown it dead. I think that's what they want to look at. It took them a while. Kind of tell the officials on the field that they want to take a look at it. Dave, the ball definitely comes out, but the problem becomes when does the whistle blow? Right. When does the whistle blow? Are you calling it for progress being stopped? I mean, I, I think that's probably the hardest part when you look at that situation. The ball definitely comes out. There's no question about that. Defenders digging in there. I think that's yep. Octavius Ox Oxidine who's who's digging in there to be able to dig dig the football out. Kentucky yes. comes up with it, but the question is, when does the whistle blow to stop the progress of the runner? Certainly, you can't review forward progress unless the whistle had blown. No question that they're able to dig that football out. I mean, the only question becomes, is, it, is there a whistle? Is there sport progress, et cetera? After further review, the ruling on the field stands, third down. So they're going to determine that the whistle had blown for progress was stopped, and it will stay Youngstown State football. And we saw the previous play, it was blown dead right before, but it looked like Youngstown was going to run the football again on third down. Find themselves in a third and long situation again. And Kentucky has dialed up the pressure a little bit on this drive here. We'll see if they blitz again or they try to play coverage. Third down and 10. Time to throw. And this one is, are they going to say incomplete? 
It hit on the turf. Kedron Smith was there defensively. This ball is just off target, and Kedron Smith, he's just playing center field. And Ooh. He almost. I mean, it well, that looks like he kind of picked that one off the turf. Yeah, it looked like he was able to get a hand right up underneath it. Youngstown State. Yeah, yeah they're, trying to get, they're trying to get that punt off. Yeah. The refs are going to blow it dead to take another look at that play. The previous play is under further review. Petrin. Smith had that 65-yard interception return for a touchdown last week against the Gators, looking for his second interception of the season. We'll step aside, let them take another look at it. What's up, y'all? Coming up on the Farm Ridge Halftime Report, Peter Burns and the rest of the crew here start talking about Penn State. Auburn, dogs dominating early as well. What do you see, Steve? An emerging star, not only in the SEC, but in college football. Dane Key is the man. I'd love to see more of a run game from Kentucky. 20 yards from Cavassier Smoke. I need a little more than that. Well, it was uh, after review, the play stands as an incomplete pass, so Kentucky will get it after the punt. Robinson with a fair catch. Well, the crowd here certainly felt like it should have been an interception. We felt perhaps it should have been an interception, but not enough from the replay guys to overturn the call on the field. Well, you got to have inconclusive evidence, and I think, you know, with the call on the field being incomplete, just not enough that they see that made them change that thought process there. A really nice effort by Smith coming up with almost back-to-back -back interceptions. So first down and 10 for Kentucky. Ball sits at the 15. Lavelle Wright in at running back. Levis. They have found a hole in that Youngstown secondary. They dumped that one off underneath and a nice run after the catch from Brendan Bates, the senior out of Cincinnati, his third catch of the year. Well, we've seen Levis hit Upshaw, one of the tight ends, and here you have Bates that looks like he's just running the deep out. Nice job of protection up front by the Kentucky offensive line. Will Levis finding the big tight end to pick up another first down. off left side there it goes right State lose football and Youngstown State says they have it and they do at the 47 yard line they needed a break and got one Jack Ubeck comes up with the fumble recovery also has an interception here in the first half you talk about just being a playmaker and that's just making a play the one that caused that fumble was Litton the safety, Quincy, caused that fumble, and Jacobek just able to be in the right place and pick the football up, and now can the Penguins take advantage of this best field position that they've had all game? First time the Penguins have been in Kentucky territory here this afternoon, 3.02 on the clock before halftime. Crenshaw looking to throw, has all day, lofts it up. Trying to get Ford to run underneath, didn't catch up to it. Really nice job on the back end, just being able to bracket coverage, one receiver running your post, and that being Oliver and Fordham coming across on the underneath route for him. You try to get catch it for a sudden change, try to hit him with an explosive play. The secondary does a nice job. They don't bite on, bite on the play action. Receivers can't get open down the field. Patrick Crenshaw, Pickerington, Ohio. At career high, 230 yards passing last week. He rushed it on that carry. She's an offense that put up 31 points in their opener, 49 points in two, but running into a blue wall here today. Matter of fact, they have had a really, really hard. 
our time. Moving the ball on third down. They are 0 for 5 today on third downs. Most of those have been long down and distant situations where they kind of find themselves in right now. Calling timeout, Youngstown. So that'll leave the Penguins with one timeout as they look at third down and nine after this timeout. Well, tonight, SEC football final is back for another season with Dari, Chris, Benjamin, Takeo. Take you through the biggest stories of the day and break down all the games, 10.30 Eastern, 9.30 Central, right here on the SEC Network and, of course, always on the ESPN app. A standing crowd here today for this Kentucky team at Kroger Field. First visit for Youngstown State. To face this Kentucky team. Doug Phillips is a grad assistant under the great Jim Tressel back in the early 90s at Youngstown State. Followed him to Ohio State for a little bit. Got out of the football business, was a principal and superintendent in the high school world before getting sucked back into the college football world. And he enjoyed every minute of it as a Youngstown State head coach. Not enjoying watching his punt team continue to come out. That ball was deflected in the air, so they may have to pick up that flag, and I believe they will. Yeah, you had, you had two officials, and that's what they, they see, that he was going to be a little early, but I think that, that, like you said up front, that ball was tipped. There is no foul for pass interference. The ball was tipped by the defense. So Doug Phillips has his punt team lined up, ready to come on the field. Here's another look at that tip. Andre Square got his hand on that one. Boy, this linebacking core for Kentucky is so good. Hope certainly J.J. Weaver will be okay. He is out today after an injury in that first quarter. Nice one-handed catch there by the punter, Patty Lynch. Not much on the kick, though. Let's see where they end up spotting it at the 29-yard line. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of the Wildcat Marching Band on SEC Network Plus. Dave, the lone snapper, Sam Merriman, he's been working his, his punter a little bit. Patty Lynch, that's probably the third time that that snap has been off target and won. Won't blame it completely on the lone snapper. The partially deflected punt. The punting unit is getting a little work in today. Will Levis threw an interception back in the first quarter. Since then, he is 7 for 7, 99 yards and a touchdown. Four-man rush over the middle. There is Key again. He lost the football. Scooped up there around the 43-yard line, so a good break for the Kentucky Wildcats. And an injured cat back around the 20-yard line. Boy, that was Jordan Dingle who came up with that football. My eyes turned. Number 77. Boy, that is Jeremy Flax, the right tackle. Take a look at back at this play. It's just that square in that they've had so much success running and a nice job by just Jordan Trowers just punching that football out. And like you talked about, Jordan Dingle being able to trail and follow that play, able to recover this football. I think the, the biggest concern is Jeremy Flax, right tackle, taking a look at. Well, we got a second with 145 to go. Let's get it back to the studio. PB, what's going on? The sideline, but he's back. Some anxious Kentucky players are waiting. Jeremy Flax to get up off that turf as they continue to work on that left leg. 
The big fella, 6'6", 328 pounds. Transferred in from Independence Community College. Right side of your screen. Let's see. Looks like he might have just got, yeah, somebody just rolled Number up on him. Jeremy Black, Kentucky. When you talk about that offensive line, you're already without Tayshawn Manning, the right guard. And so now, going to have a new right tackle as well. Four as Kentucky fires near side. That pass is caught by Barry and Brown. Barry on Brown. That gain is good for another first down, Kentucky. Nice shot, Will Levis being able to identify where he wants to go. A little pressure by the Penguins defense, but Levis has been on target like we talked about outside of one, one throw. First down and 10 from the 42-yard line. Here's Smoke. He is thrown to the turf. Greg Benton with the tackle. Gain of a yard. Cross down by Benton. Gain of a yard. Second and nine. Kentucky in that tempo mode. Four-man rush. Levis going up top. Just overthrows Dane Key. Coverage by Jackie Buck. Talking to defensive coordinator Jamal Brown about his secondary. Felt like Jackie Buck played a bunch of football last year. Feels comfortable, confident in him in the cover game. Oh, did a nice job of just squeezing right there, Brown to the sideline and really not giving Will Levis anywhere to put the football on that go route. Bowling Green grad back in 2010. Boy, he was fun to talk with yesterday. Sharp young man. He's got a bright future ahead of him. Davion Robinson in motion. They'll go that way with the football. First down for the Cats inside the 25. Down to the 24-yard line. 17 more yards. Will just needs a little bit of time, and those receivers, they're doing an outstanding job of getting open down the field. Boy, nice block. Allows Smoke to get down to the 10-yard line. Trowers brings him down. That's a gain of 13. Kentucky's going to use a timeout here. Probably should have been a horse collar tackle as well right there. Hey, Monday, 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 Central. Thinking Out Loud is back for the season with Spencer Hall and Richard Johnson. They'll break down the weekend on the gridiron, talk about the hottest topics for the coming week, and preview Saturday's biggest games. It's all right here on the SEC Network and, of course, the ESPN app. Georgia putting it on South Carolina, 21 to nothing. There is Mark Stoops, his brother Bob Stoops. Here, instead of watching Oklahoma and Nebraska renew their rivalry, Bob in town, of course, big day for all the Stoops family. It's, of course, Vince Morrow right there alongside the coach. Uh, Youngstown is their hometown, of course. A big moment to be able to bring them in and face them today. Smoke down to the five-yard line. Clock continues to move under a minute. Now it's at 41 seconds. Cats line up in a hurry. Offs it up in the air and off the fingertips. Trying to hit Barry and Brown, and Jack Ubeck was there in coverage. It's a nice job by all three players. Will Levis, you know, you put in the football where only his receiver could really try to get there. But Jackie Beck does a nice job of just 
engaging the wide receiver enough where he can't get both hands up to it. Nice job by all three guys. 29 seconds on the clock. Cats still have those two timeouts. Time out, time out. And they'll use one of them right here. On a third down and goal from about the five yard line. Talking to Will Levis yesterday, he said, you know, it's going to be tough. He knew the he knew the dynamics of this game. You're coming off the emotional night in Gainesville. You've got an FCS opponent coming to town. Um, you know, everybody slapping you on the back, early kickoff. And he said he needs to bring the energy, but he has to kind of manage that because he can get a little too emotional at times. He has to hone it in himself. <laughs> yeah. And so for him, it, it, it's probably what you expect. You know, it, it's probably what you expect. It didn't start as, as, as fast as you, you could have. You've had two turnovers offensively. Your defense has kept you in this game as far as not allowing explosive plays from, from the Penguins. But, you know, offensively, it's probably what you expected. The, the thing that you don't like is you had two, two big-time injuries, your right tackle, and then J.J. Weaver yeah. as well. J.J. Weaver out for this game. We'll try to get an update on Jeremy Flax as well. So here we go, third and goal from the five. Levis over the middle, high throw. It's incomplete, so now it's fourth down, but a flag will come in late. There's a flag on the play. Did he hook him? That could be the only, I mean, that's a late flag, really late flag. Pass interference, defense number two. By rule, the ball we placed in the two-yard line and includes an automatic first down. Take another look here. I mean, they're playing man to man, and it, should, it had to be that left hand around the hip. It's the only thing that he catches him right there around the hip a little bit. It took a while, but the flag got to that. Now, maybe it took a while because the flag was thrown from like the corner pile on. <laughs> so maybe that was hanging in the air a long time. But still, here you go. First and goal. They try to throw it again in the end zone. This time it's caught. Touchdown, Cats. Chris Lewis with the touchdown reception in the corner of the end zone. Dave, we'll take another look at it, and it's just a back shoulder fade route, and you know, just a nice job of ball placement this time. And we've seen them try to throw that that pass a couple of times, and Chris Lewis he just does a nice job of selling up the field, but knowing that ball is going to be. Kind of short back shoulder, able to come up with the completion. One after is up and good, and that is the first career touchdown for Chris Lewis. Twenty-one to nothing, Cats out in front with 20 seconds to go before halftime. Hey, it's never too early to look ahead at upcoming college football seasons, and we have our SEC Now Football Schedule Release Special coming your way for the 2023 season, Tuesday night, 7 o'clock Eastern time. We'll break down each school and look at the best games for next season. You can always watch it from anywhere on the ESPN app. Boy, I just hope, personal, personal opinion here, I just hope we are moving toward a nine-game conference schedule in the future. Some of your lower tier schools that, you know, their budget depends on. Youngstown State. Yeah, their budget depends on a game like this. They won't be very happy if that happens. Youngstown State getting about $550,000 to come here and play this Kentucky team today. The first ever meeting between these two teams. Here goes Rushton from the goal line. He has popped at the 20, stays on his feet, dropped there. And that'll leave 13 seconds on the clock for Youngstown State. Boy, the Penguins just 21 yards of offense here in the second quarter. Meanwhile, Kentucky has racked up 179 this quarter. And a couple of nice drives by the Cats as well. All told, Kentucky 261 to 54 in total yards. The Penguins will just take it to the end zone. So Will Levis goes 14 of 17, 188, two touchdowns and that interception. 
Smoke rushes for 40 yards. And Kentucky has a three touchdown lead. And they will get the football to start the second half. Let's go down to Andrea. Coach, pregame we talked clean football. You had the two turnovers on offense, but how did that unit respond? Yeah, just like you said, I mean, the ball's on the ground too much. That's the big thing. You know, we talked about ball security. We were kind of sloppy with the football. We're moving it, but uh, not, not super clean, so I'm not real pleased. Well, your defense has held Youngstown State to one first down that half. What's working on that side? Yeah, that side's been clean all day. They're playing hard, playing good, and uh, making them work for their yards. Coach, thank you. Thank you. Business as usual for Coach Stoops and company. They lead 21 to nothing over Youngstown State, trying to go to 3 and 0. Oh. With that, time to get you to the studio. Peter Burns, it's all yours. And welcome back to SEC Network Football presented by Allstate. Moments away from second half football here in Lexington where the Cats trying to go to 3-0, and lead 21 to nothing over Youngstown State. Dave Neal alongside my partner Deuce McAllister. And Deuce, it took a little while for Kentucky to kind of get going, but boy, the second quarter, they really opened up. Yeah, that's to be expected. I mean, that's that early start that we talked about, and you look at what just what Will Levis was able to do. Outside of one throw that his receiver probably should have protected a little bit better, he was outstanding that, that first half. Well, let's take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance of the first half, and how about Will Levis? Boy, when he found the rhythm, he started this offense started really, really churning out some yards. Yeah, it really did, and it started with him on the quarterback sneak, and you know, he had a back shoulder throw. This one was the whip route to, the, to his receiver, uh, Key. He just did a nice job of distribution as far as the football is concerned. And, you know, you saw him reset his feet on one throw. He was going to the post, was able to hit the underneath dig route. That's the back shoulder throw. You know, he's just being the leader that he talked about and just being able to have the control of that offense. 14 to 17, a buck 88, a couple of touchdowns for Will Levis in that first half. I think Coach Stoops would have probably liked to have built a little bit more than a 21 0 lead in the first half, but all said, I think the Kentucky fans like what they saw in that second quarter. Really, Youngstown State just couldn't move the football. They were 0 for 6 on third downs, and this Kentucky defense has been pretty solid this afternoon. So the touchback will bring it out to the 25-yard line. It's time to get an injury update. A couple of injuries for Kentucky. Andrea, what's going on? Yeah, Dave, you said it. We saw a couple of guys go down. Linebacker J.J. Weaver is out for the remainder of the game with a left elbow injury. But offensive lineman Jeremy Flax is confirmed good to go. That is good news. Jeremy Flax was down for a while. They were looking at the right tackles left leg for a while. So that's good to know that he can get back into this game. Speaking of getting into the game, they'll need their quarterback, Demetri Crenshaw, to get going if Youngstown State has any chance. They'll throw it on first down, loft it up in the air, and catch is made. A one-handed grab on the far side by Bryce Oliver, the former Kentucky Wildcat, with a heck of a catch. You got a flag, flag on the field as well. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number zero. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Dave, you talk about this catch, and this is just locating it by Oliver. He, he catches it one hand, he gets the foot down as well inside. And then you talk about just a hit right there on Walker. He beats the right tackle with the inside move, and then he kind of uses his head after the football is thrown, hit the quarterback late. So that's the down the field stuff that Youngstown State talked about wanting to be able to do, and that's what exactly what they are able to do is they open up the second half. Well, they spotted down to 33. Oliver, you know, excited to come back to Lexington, spent three years here on this Kentucky team. Grinshaw will throw again, going up top. Trying to find Oliver, and that one is Pass incomplete. Is incomplete. Intended for Oliver. Oliver out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Had 24 catches last year for Youngstown State. Had just eight catches for 125 yards while he was wearing a big blue jersey. And, you know, Coach Duke says, hey, sometimes, you know, they recruited him knowing he was a good player. I mean, he wouldn't have brought him in here if he didn't think he was a good player. But sometimes you get lost in the shuffle and don't get your reps. And he felt like, you know what, he's a good young man. And 
Now he's getting an opportunity to show what he can do, and he's happy for it. He'd be much happier. He quick catches it against his team. Big collision there, incomplete pass. Carrington Valentine in coverage. He takes it away from the trail, Fordham. Well, we saw earlier it was pretty much the run game by Youngstown State. This time, open up this half, they're really throwing it around and trying to get Crenshaw going a little bit in that one. Just a little bit off mark for Fordham. Nice job by Valentine as well. for the football, and Valentine at the last moment strips it out of his hands. Dave, this is what you talk about playing through the football, able to strip this ball out. The question is going to be, does he control it enough for them to say, hey, look, that's a touchdown. It looks like he's got it on the shoulder, and then it's ripped out at the end. I think the officials may take a look at this one. Nice job of just it's zero blitz. It's a blitz all the way. Nice job of picking it up and talked about Crenshaw just giving his receiver an opportunity to try to make a play and not going to take a, another look at it. Great job by Valentine. Yeah. Yeah. Bootleg. Over the middle, pass caught. Big gainer in the Youngstown territory. That one goes to Davion Robinson. That'll be a gain of 22 across midfield. Nice job with strong hands. You've got the defender right there on your back. And you see Robinson be able to high point that football and catch it with his hands. And that, that's the difference between what he and Oliver did as far as on those two passes. Oliver was never really able to get it away from his body. You see Robinson use nothing but his hands to bring that ball in. Two guys moving offensively for Kentucky. Full start, offense, number 10. Five yard penalty, first down. Looked like your receiver wanted to go in motion, and I think Will Levis needed him as far as to block on that play and ended up snapping the ball, and so it just ended up being a false start. Kentucky's offense came in averaging 312 yards per game. He's at 261 this afternoon. He can get a first and 15. Pass is caught. There is Barry and Brown with another reception today. Barry and Brown now with three grabs. That one picks up 13. Love the job there by Kavazie Smoke. Had a little penetration leakage as far as the defensive line. He fakes his run action able to pick up that defensive player to give Will Levis enough time to get the football down to Barry M. Brown. Right in the backfield. Second down and two. Quick throw coming near side. Here's Brown. Brown will have the first down inside the 30. Ran out of the grass with Jordan Trowers. DeMarco Augustin able to push him out of bounds. You get that one-on-one -on -one by Will Levis here, and he just gives his receiver an opportunity to make a play, and you just see the explosion. You see the speed there by Brown just to be able to make a guy miss, and pursuit is what actually brings him down. Nice job of Will Levis having the option to run the football, but taking the pass play there. Here 
Fire Smoke. Two Penguin defenders are there, and he's not going to outrun either one of them. Another good play from Woodkey. The sophomore defensive end. Four tackles for loss. Well, what's interesting here is they ran this play earlier, and he was able to get it for a tackle for loss. This time they just have him out leverage. Just a nice job of playing assignment football there. And Woodkey is not fooled whatsoever on that weak side toss play or pitch play outside. Woodkey with six tackles, four of them behind the line. That'll play. Yeah. Empty set now on second down and 13. Pressure comes. Levis feels it, throws near side. Levis. Gratis with the catch, gain of five. First time we've seen him today. Mikel, the redshirt freshman from right here in Lexington. Just another screen where they set it up. Nice job. You have a little pressure inside, but able to pick up some positive yards after that weak side run earlier. First catch in a Kentucky uniform from Crowdis. Third down. Levis backpedals, fires, throws a dart right to the 12-yard line. Tavion Robinson sat down and made the nice catch. That'll be a first down for Kentucky. Dave, this is a dart. May not have been traditional. He's climbing up into the pocket. He sees it, just sits down. Robinson does a nice job of just sitting down in that zone. And that is a dart. Nice arm strength, nice movement by Will Levis for the first down pickup. Levis now 19 to 22 for 250. First down and 10. No running with right, left side. Big collision at the 10, still driving down to the six yard line. A seven yard game. Physical, physical run. And you better bring it all because you can see none of those defenders were able to get him down low and he's just continued to throw guys off of him. You see the leg drive, just a physical run by Wright. Levis this drive, five out of five, 62 yards. Here's Smoke, kicks it to the outside, races to the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Kentucky. If you go back and look at this play, this almost looks like a, a miscommunication by Levis and Smoke, and that was Smoke that probably ran the wrong way. You see him running off the field, patting himself, and he goes the wrong way, but you see him have the speed to be able to get to the outside. He goes the wrong way, and Will Levis, he doesn't panic. He's, he just sees him and, and, and goes to the other side, and Kavassier Smoke has enough speed where he can beat the defender to the corner. Boy, that was a nice drive. Will Levis was perfect throwing the football. Kavassi and Smoke. Busted to the outside and catches the pile on for the touchdown. It's now 28-0. Kentucky advantage. Kavassi Smoke with the touchdown run. Coming off the game. But she had 80 yards on 14 carries down in Gainesville today, 13 for 44, and that touchdown. Pats lead at 28 to nothing. Short kick, very returnable, taken at the seven by Rushton. He's still on his feet out over the 30 yard line. Well, our stellar SEC football lineup rolls on today. Just a little while, you'll get a chance to see the second-ranked Alabama Crimson Tide hosting Louisiana Monroe. Number 15, Tennessee against Akron, and number 10, Arkansas versus Missouri State are at 7 o'clock Eastern on SEC Network Plus. And we cap the night with 18th-ranked Florida taking on USF down in the swamp, 7.30 Eastern time on our SEC Saturday night game. Of course, you can always catch that stuff on ESPN app. Youngstown State at the 31-yard line, first and 10. 
Dump it off. McLaughlin has some room to run. Look how nifty he is. Look at his speed. My goodness, stay on. Inbounds down around the 10. What a run from Jaleel McLaughlin. Dave, you can't set the screen up any better. They did an outstanding job of setting this screen up. Kentucky has been able to get pressure all game, and right here, you sell it a little bit. It's a screen back, and there is no one over there. Once they're able to get in pursuit, you just see the speed that you talked about. First and goal. They'll loft it up to the end zone, and a flag comes in. A couple of flags come in. Carrington Valentine and Oliver going at it. Uh, you can tell two players that have, have gone against yes. each other a little bit, uh, probably in practice. That's, that's that goes back. That goes back a while. That conversation that they're having right there on the sideline, that goes back a Pass while. Pass interference. Defense, number 14. Our rule of the ball we placed at the two-yard line and includes an automatic first down. It's just a fade route, just trying to let Oliver go up and make a play on the football. So first and goal, they'll try it again. Those two guys are battling, and it's taken away. Carrington Valentine with the interception. They were trying to go back to Oliver, and this time, Valentine wins the battle. And that's how you compete. That's how you compete as far as the defensive back. You got to get your head around to locate the football, and Valentine is able to do so. Once that ball is chipped up, it's your football. I mean, just a nice job of just competing. Same route. I mean, it's just a back shoulder throw from your quarterback, and does a nice job of being physical at the line of scrimmage. Valentine does it. He's able to come up with the interception. Valentine and company snuff out the Youngstown State scoring opportunity. Timeout on the field. 28-0 Kentucky out in front over Youngstown State. Hey, Extra Yard for Teachers Week is an annual back-to-school effort led by the College Football Playoff Foundation that brings college sports together to recognize and show appreciation to great teachers across the country. To support Extra Yard for Teachers Recognition and Resources Initiatives, follow at, CP, at CFP Extra Yard or scan the QR code for more. Certainly, we had a chance to talk to Will Levis yesterday. And he was talking about one of his favorite teachers from high school, Xavier High School in Middletown, Connecticut, was John Pobolaski. English was typically Will's All least sorts. favorite subject. Offense, number 89, five-yard penalty, first down. Said it was his least favorite subject growing up, but Mr. Uh, Pobolaski made him look forward to it every day with his hilarious dry sense of humor and some of the crazy stories he'd tell about his past. And Hey, whatever it takes to keep you interested, right? Whatever it takes, baby. You got to learn. We all have to learn. We learned last drive. That <laughs> this is a pretty good quarterback. He was five out of five on that last touchdown drive for Kentucky. He's had a great afternoon. And they start putting together his numbers. They are quite impressive today. 19 out of 22, 250 with a couple of touchdowns. Also has a short rushing touchdown to his credit today. Well, you love the leadership intangibles that he brings to the table. His ability to keep his eyes down the field and you know find his outlet guy did a good job of resetting his, his feet on you know he was going to the post he took the dig instead once he saw the safety stay high so he's done a great job of just distribution of football and understanding and knowing where he wanted to go with the football second down 15. Boy, he lofts it up in the air that pass is caught and what a grab it was Brendan Bates, the tight end, coming up with a masterful catch on that far sideline. Dave, and you take a look at it again, it's double A-gap blitz, and so he knows he has to buy a little time. They're running a fade route with your slot, with your tight end, and it's a, it's a nice understanding of where he wants to go with the football. He buys a little time to be able to let his receiver or tight end win down the field, and that's just him being smart and understanding where he wants to go with the football.
Levis. Uh, Levis will hand it off. But will Levis. Now 273, 20 of 23. And a lot of talk about Will Levis and moving up the draft boards and potential first rounder. Here's where ESPN's NFL draft experts kind of have Will Levis right now in the quarterback race. Mel Kuyper Jr. has him as the fifth quarterback taken. Meanwhile, Todd McShay lists him as the third quarterback taken. A lot of football left before that happens, but you like the positioning of where you're at where you at earlier in the season. Heaves it on the run, wobbly pass. That will fall incomplete around the 12-yard line. Jordan Anthony, the speedster, where they were just trying to get it to him. The young man, the true freshman who runs it, who has run a 10-1, 100 meters before. Levis was just trying to air it out, let him go get it. Yeah, and, and, and that's one where he would really have to set his feet to be able to throw it. He got flushed out of the pocket. We saw Youngstown just be able to bring some pressure. This time they've got a guy right down the middle of the field, and Will just can't get enough on this football with the speed that Jordan Anthony has. Got another true freshman, Brandon White. He's been clocked at 4-2 in the 40. Pressure comes, and that one is knocked out of the hands of Will Levis, but recovered by Kentucky. I think that was Jeremy Flax that ended up falling on that football, and that was his guy. You know, we, we'll, we'll take another look at it. He's late to see that pressure, gets caught up too, too much inside. Nice job by DeMarco on Augustine of just knocking that football out. Not going for the set, but he's just going straight for the strip of the football of Will Levis, he's able to knock it out. But that's your right tackle that's got to be able to see that blitz and be able to kick outside. Kentucky will have to punt it away, and there's some contact. Let's see if a flag comes out. No flags. Good fellow was hit. I don't know if a defensive player got a piece of that football, but regardless, Youngstown State will have a decent field position when we come back. They got a goose egg on the board trying to stop that. 442 to go third quarter. All right, Youngstown State first down at 10 from the 38 yard line. They will hand it off. That's going to Rushton. Nowhere to go. Kedron Smith was such a big pickup for this Kentucky secondary in the offseason. You know, Jacquez Jones playing here last year. Had an opportunity to kind of help recruit Kedron Smith, a couple of former Rebel teammates. He's done a nice job, not only today, but last week as well with the pick six against Florida. Four man rush. Underneath it goes, Fordham with the catch, turns the corner, east to midfield and into Kentucky territory. Fordham, First down for the Penguins. Kentucky rolling in some, some of those younger players, secondary and linebacker-wise, and right there you see them just have to do a better job of tackling in space offensively. You really see the Penguins try to open it up a lot more, particularly throwing the football down the field. Rushed it. He loses a yard. Tackled by Jordan Wright. Jordan Wright with another stop. Super senior. Ray Rushton just try to get to the edge and he can't get there. I mean, it's a lot different when you talk about McLaughlin trying to get to the edge and Rushton just trying to get to the edge. You just see the team speed and overall defensive speed of that big blue defense show up. Jordan Wright's played a ton of football. He's playing his 44th career game for Kentucky. Three man rush. Dump it off near side. Here's Dre Rushton. Boy, Wildcats swarm into the football. Jackson brings him down. Carrington Valentine, the corner, kind of slowed things up. Let his defense come over there and make a play. So a third down now. 
for Youngstown State. Third downs have not been kind to the Penguins today. They are 0 for 7. Well, defensively, that last play, it was drop eight coverage, only rushing three guys, and so Crenshaw didn't have a choice but to drop it off to his tailback. And like you said, you just do a great job of open field tackle. And the Cats will swarm Dimitri Crenshaw. They will spot his forward progress at the 45-yard line. Keaton Wade, Oxendine there among those blue jerseys. That'll be a loss of 12. That time it wasn't just three as far as rushers. They bring an extra guy, Jordan Wright. He's coming up the A-gap as he's started on the right defensive end. He, he is free up the A-gap, and there is nowhere for Crenshaw to go with the football. Patty Lynch. Caught by Robinson. Makes a man miss, still dancing around. Not a good decision that time for Robinson. He loses some yardage inside the five. They'll spot it at the three yard line. So 113 to go here in the third quarter. Will Levis back on the field. Capital One rewarding performance. 20 to 24, 273. Two. And three touchdowns total. Couple through the air, one rushing. Of the game. So one sportsmanlike conduct against Kentucky will move it back to the one at a half yard line. Let's get downstairs to Andrea. Yeah, guys, I talked to Will Levis about the offense this year. He said scheme-wise, there's a lot of carryover from last year, but he does feel like they're utilizing the tight ends a little bit more, and there's a lot more confidence in pushing the ball through the air. And off goes to Smoke. Rossier now with 16 carries. Closing in on 50 yards. Picks up four there to give him 51 yards. Youngstown State done a nice job against the run today. They have held this Kentucky rushing attack to just 76 yards on the ground. Well, we knew coming into the game that was probably the strength, that front seven up front, you know, could they get tackled for losses? They've been able to do that, and they've been able to get a lot of pen penetration as well. And the toss sweep. Vassier coming near side. And he'll have it to the 15, which will be good enough for the first down. It'll be a pickup of nine. There you see Kentucky just, they're able to out leverage that Penguins defense and nice job on the edge. Flags and those tight ends just being able to seal, seal off and all smoke has to do is turn it up field and you're in the second level before really somebody even touches you. Kentucky will let this clock wind down to zeros and in the third quarter. They do pick up a touchdown in the third quarter to stretch their lead to 28 to nothing. But today Will Levis has put on quite the quarterback clinic. 20 to 24, 273. Still 15 minutes of football left. Hey, and welcome back to SEC Network Football presented by Allstate. We head to the fourth quarter. Kentucky leads it by four touchdowns. They had an explosive second quarter where they put up 21 points. And now sit at the 15-yard line, first down and 10. Whistles will stop that play. It looks like Jeremy Flax might have gotten a little bit of a head start. Offense, number 77. Five-yard penalty, first down. Talking to Rich Scangarello, the offensive coordinator for Kentucky. You know, he's got some young talent. We haven't seen a whole lot of these young speedsters that we have read so much about, Jordan Anthony and Brandon White, we have seen a lot of Varian Brown today, and Dane Key are so talented. But I mean, you think about the weapons that this 
offense will have in terms of pushing the ball down the field as this season unfolds and down the road as well. Man, it's impressive. Well, teams are going to have to respect the speed up top, and then you talked about earlier getting Rodriguez back, how much of a difference maker we already know he is. And he's probably sitting here thinking about, well, we could take the top off this thing now, so maybe they won't be putting six, seven guys in the box for him. But he'll, he'll love a light box, trust me. I mean, because if he can take on a linebacker and even secondary guys, and I have that one-on-one -on -one matchup, I'm probably going to go with Chris, uh, you know, nine times out of ten in those situations. Smoke off the right side. He'll have the first down and gets it out to the 30 yard line. Fresh set of downs for Kentucky after that six yard pickup. You see Kentucky get in that 12 personnel, two tight ends, and you know, earlier in this drive they were able to run across, I mean, the toss out of this play, and this time they just come with power. And, you know, it's just Smoke just being able to get behind some of those big offensive linemen. Jacob Burton that time was the puller, does a nice job of creating a crease for him to get, get in and picks up that first down. Lavelle right. In at backfield, now he'll stand seven yards deep. He'll stack some receivers to the near side. There goes Key in motion. Oh, loose football. Levis dropped it, corrals it, and then gets walloped. That'll come in as a late hit. Tough on a defender, but it, 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 it's that's a late hit. I mean, that's that's unnecessary roughness. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number seven. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And the reason it's unnecessary roughness is after he's able to recover this fumble, he takes a knee. And the, the defender, he, oh. he's got to be able to pull up. He's got to be able to not hit him, I mean, because he didn't pull up whatsoever. That was Augustine that hit him after Will just took a knee just to say, hey, look, I've recovered the football, the play is over. Augustine has to be able to pull up in that situation. DeMarco didn't get to play in the first half of this game. He had a targeting violation in their last game against Dayton in the third quarter. Here's Brown, and he'll make the catch. And he is out to the 40. Nine yard line. But Chris Rodriguez on the sidelines today for Kentucky, of course, still sitting out a suspension that will last four games for some off the field issues that were going on. And certainly he's been practicing with the team. Matter of fact, he spent a lot of time on the scout team. But when it was announced this week that he was going to return in two weeks for the Ole Miss game, they started to slide him back more to the first, second team offense, getting more reps and get him ready for that SEC contest against the Rebels. Wide side throw, and it's right on the money. That's Crowdis with that reception, the second today. And there is Mr. Rodriguez. And, you know, it, there's it, obviously unfortunate things going on to keep him away from the football field. But in a roundabout way, it's keeping him. He's not going to have the 70 carries that he might have had through four weeks, right? So he's going to be fresh and ready to go. He'll have fresh legs. Yeah. He'll have fresh legs. And the biggest thing is for him is to make sure from a conditioning standpoint that he's ready to go. And as you see, there's enough weapons on this team that they can go out there and be productive. They've already went on the road and won at Florida. So he's just an, another target that this Kentucky offense has. Well, Levis had to get that one away in a hurry. Pressure came. He's up to 307 yards through the air. That's his fifth 300-yard game of his career. When you start talking about Will Levis, you know, he actually, when he was at Penn State, I just saw this number, more rushes than passes. And he came here, people kept talking about he's a running quarterback, running quarterback. But my goodness, man, has he just turned himself into some sort of leader and a and I mean, just a heck of a quarterback in all aspects of the game. It's just the opportunity as well, and this is a different offense. And what did he tell us? He's, he's played for six different yeah. offensive coordinators, so for him to be in this situation, he just handles it in stride. Gets it away in a hurry, and pass is caught. P. 
England defensive line. A little more pressure here. Will Levis and Eric Upshaw is not happy by the kind of the shot that he takes from DeMarco Augustine. Thing about DeMarco Augustine, when he's been on the field, he is, you know, he's out there. Oh, there goes right turn in the corner, and a flag comes in, a couple of them. It's going to be holding. Yeah, it looked like Dane Key right in front of a couple of our officials. Yeah, I mean, they did a nice job of spilling that defensively, but the receiver, he's got to let him go. Holding, offense, number six, 10 yard penalty, third down. This Penguin team defensively, they're still, they're still playing hard. They're still playing hard and you've just got to let him go right there on the edge. You, you got the freshman receiver. He's trying to do his job. You know, he's known for catching passes, but hey, look coach, I can block as well down the field, but right there at the point of attack, you've got to be able to let the cornerback go on the edge. So third down and 16 now. Pressure comes over the middle, high throw, and that one is picked off. Picked off in the back end by Quincy Linton. His second interception of the year, and flags come out, a couple of them. But that drive will be stopped. Second pick of the game by Will Levis. I think this is going to be a block, blind side block. The old peel back. During the interception, blunt personal foul, blind side block, intercepting team number seven. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. Well, that'll be the interception, but they won't start where they hoped they would. 28 0 Kentucky back in a moment. Thanks, Peter. First play from scrimmage from the 20-yard line, incomplete, trying to hit Bryce Oliver in a 28-0 game. Youngstown State with just 152 total yards of offense. Kentucky at 402. Run game had been very good for Kentucky. If you're going to try to nitpick them today, just 91 yards on the ground. Good strong run from McLaughlin. Well, Dave, if you're Coach Stoops, you've got to find something. I mean, because so far it, it, it's a shutout for you defensively. Offensively, it's going to be going back to the turnovers. You had two, two interceptions, and that one was on Will Levis, that last one. That ball sailed on him, and so that's probably a footwork issue. But you also had a fumble early in the game. Actually, two fumbles. One you recovered, one Youngstown State recovered. So from a turnover standpoint, you can always harp on that. So there's always things you, you can work on, even if you're playing great defensively. Grinshaw, flag comes out. Oliver pushed out of bounds by Kedron Smith on that far side, right around midfield. Pass, pass interference, defense, number one. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. That'll push the ball to the 41 yard line. Crenshaw today, 6 of 18, 122 yards. Comes near side, McLaughlin makes the catch and immediately hit on the spot by Alex Afari, the true freshman out of Cincinnati. Nice open field tackle by Afari, just being able to lock man to man against McLaughlin. He's able to take him down immediately for a tackle for loss. Youngstown State in the FCS top 25 coaches poll this week. 
have struggled the first two seasons. I say seasons as opposed to years. That one's knocked down because Youngstown State, of course, FCS had that spring season right after COVID. And then quick turnaround and played a fall season. So when Doug Phillips got hired, he got hired right when COVID started. So he never got to go through a spring, any of their coordinators or anybody. They just had to go start playing some, some, some real games. So this season was the first time they had an off-season workout program where co quarterbacks can work with receivers, guys can get in shape and train and do all that and come back in August and start real practice. So it's been a kind of a, a different route for Doug Phillips getting his team ready to play. Well, nice job by Crenshaw dancing around, but it should have been picked off. Right through the hands of Childress, Bryce Oliver was the intended receiver. Crenshaw does a nice job of climbing the pocket. Keeps his eyes downfield. Probably a little surprised that he didn't take off and run. You're trying to hit that crossing route, that square in, and the ball is behind. You had a safety that was kind of lingering as well that probably would have created the separation, but Childress is going to kick himself a couple times because he could have should have came up with that interception. Here's the punt from Patty Lynch. Robinson. A stutter step. Nice little move out over the 20 to the 25-yard line. Robinson on the return. So we'll step aside for a moment. 8.51 to go here in Lexington. SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. Well, tonight, SEC Football Final is back for another season with Dari, Chris, Benjamin, and Takeo. They'll take you through the biggest stories of the day and break down all the games, 10.30 Eastern, 9.30 Central, right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. That'll be coming your way after that Florida-South Florida contest on our SEC Saturday night. Tom Jordan Cole down in the swamp. He's probably a little feisty. Boy, this Kentucky defense held Anthony Richardson to four yards rushing. And 14 for 35 through the air. Had a couple of interceptions. Gators only had 95 yards and five first downs in that second half. I mean, that's just putting it on them right there now. They're a stingy unit. And one of the things you talk about are the hustle plays, the big cat effort plays on defense. They're, they had one here as well on the screen play. With that effort that they had on that play, it saved them seven points because two plays later, they were able to come up with the interception in the end zone. On second down, they'll come near side with it. Pass is caught by Justice Dingle. So Justice, the senior who transferred in from Georgia Tech to play with his brother Jordan Dingle, the redshirt freshman, both have been factors in this one today. Justice does a nice job of being able to secure this number. I mean, this football, I'm not crazy about his number, though, that 47. And that's, a, that's like a long snapper number. Justin, we got to work on that one. First down to 10. Levis trying to air it out. That one is incomplete, trying to hit Crowdis. Rich Gangarello telling us that he wanted to get Crowdis some more reps in this game, and he wasn't kidding. They've gone to him four or five times today. Well, I wanted to get him some reps, and you see the speed, and that's one of them. You know, you, you talk to Will Levis, just understanding who's that receiver, where's my launch point as far as where I have to let the football go, those guys being on the right landmark. And, you know, they want to take shots. They want to push the football down the field. They have to let teams know that they will take the top off of defense. One thing that the, you saw the Penguins do is when they've gone empty, they've showed this double A-gap look. There goes Demarcus Harris in the open field. It's a foot race to the goal line. 
and he'll be dragged down inside the five-yard line. It'll be first and goal, Kentucky. Ezekiel Blake chases him down, but a 58-yard pickup. You, can, you cannot execute it any better. They knew that when they go empty, it's been double A-gap blitz, and they have checked to the screen. That time it may have been a called play, and all the guys up front, you just have to get in the way or pick up somebody, and you see, you let your receiver, the Marcus Harris, be able to do the rest. And the receiver room, as much speed as they have, they're going to let him know, hey, look, Hell, man, you, yeah. can't, you, you can't get caught like that. You know, if, if you're not going to go and score, let me run that play because they, 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 they've got too much speed in that receiver room. Levis throwing it up high and incomplete. Off the fingertips of Chris Lewis. Lewis has a touchdown reception in this game. It'll be second and goal. Caught one earlier. On the other, on the other, going the other way, and it was a back shoulder throw. And this one wanted to, him to just go up and high point it a little bit. Not able to get that completion, but Will Levis has spread the football around. I think he's thrown it to 10 different receivers so far in this football game. So here we go. Second down and goal. Levis looking to throw again. Tucks it, runs. Big collision at the three, nowhere to go. It'll be third and goal. Nice job. They don't have the first option. It looked like they wanted to go to Robinson. Will Levis doesn't try to force the football into a tight area. He takes it down and tries to run with it. It's a big hit right there. You're not crazy about that, particularly at where you are in this game. Got to make sure that your quarterback is protecting himself as well when he's running the football. So they'll go empty set here. 5.41 on the clock. Levis, quick throw. Pass is caught. Robinson, nowhere to go. He is swarmed by a couple of white jerseys, led by Jordan Trowers. That's his 11th tackle in this game, and Youngstown State still playing hard, and they'll force the field goal team out on the field. Doesn't change. I mean, double A gap blitz on the, on the empty set. They go back. First time it was a screen to the right. This time it's a screen to the left. And your corner, Trousers, does a nice job of not getting picked off by that left tackle. And he's able to make that tackle for, right, basically for a loss and force this field goal attempt. 23 yard field goal for Ruffalo. 31 of 38 in his career. Five of six this year from the near hash. Chance poor with the hold. And the kick is up, and it is good. So the Cats put three on the board. It's 31-0, 4.54 to go. Well, there is offensive coordinator Rick Scangarello talking to Will Levis, who has gone for over 300 yards again today. The offensive coordinator talking to his quarterback. Time to take a look at our Mayhem moment presented by all guys that have gone nose to nose here a little bit today. Former Kentucky wide receiver Bryce Oliver working against Carrington Valentine. Just a moment before this play, there was a pass interference against Valentine. The very next play, Valentine comes back, tips it to himself, and comes up with the interception in the end zone. And that is our Mayhem moment. There was certainly a couple of uh, plays there, the sequence that was certainly qualifies as a Mayhem moment. Hey, Mitch Davidson checks in at quarterback now for the Penguins. He'll hand it off. Five-yard gain out to the 30-yard line. Youngstown State, after this one, doesn't get any easier. They're here in Lexington, and guess where they got to go <laughs> their next game? They got to go to Fargo and take on North Dakota State. Number one ranked yeah. North Dakota State. So that's not an easy task whatsoever. That Missouri Valley is some kind of league at the FCS level with North Dakota State, South Dakota State, Missouri State. By the way, Missouri State in Arkansas today. Bobby Petrino heading back to Fayetteville. Nice little dump off to Randy Smith. He'll have a first down at the 39-yard line. 
And you see some of these younger players getting, the, getting this opportunity. I mean, for them, you know, you, you, you talk about playing a team like Kentucky and just trying to measure up, try to see if you have what it takes to compete against a team, you know, in the SEC and in this stadium. I mean, it, it's a special moment, you know. You, you look at the scoreboard, yes, you kind of understand and know that, but just to get the opportunity to go out there and compete, that, that's what you look for. H. Davis is a junior out of Salem, Ohio. Randy Smith has some running room into Kentucky territory. He's pushed out of bounds around the 38-yard line. Kentucky trying to keep a zero off the board. You know, it's been a while since Kentucky had a shutout. You got to go back to 2009, Deuce, for a Wildcat shutout. They beat Miami of Ohio 42 to nothing. That is a long time. Yeah, that is a long time. And uh, trust me, this defense will stiffen up as they get closer into the high red zone area. Quarterback keeper there. Davidson will take it. Davidson. Last year, played a couple of games. Threw for 277 yards and four touchdowns. Well, he was able to contribute last week with the school record as far as six touchdowns. You know, Crenshaw had five of them. He comes in and he throws one as well. And so, you know, just to be able to make sure that he's ready if something happens to Crenshaw. 6-4-208 goes Davidson. Dante Walker in it, running back. Flags and whistles will stop this play. Offside, defense number 42 jumped into the neutral zone, causing the offensive player to react. Five yard penalty, second down. Our stellar SEC football lineup rolls on today at 4 Eastern, 3 Central, with number two Alabama hosting Louisiana Monroe. 15th ranked Tennessee takes on Akron and number 10 Arkansas against Missouri State, 7 Eastern, 6 Central on SEC Network Plus. We cap the night, 18th ranked Florida taking on USF down in the swamp, 7.30 Eastern time. It's our SEC Saturday night game. Of course, all that will be followed by SEC football final. Second down and a couple of yards. Davidson just lofts it up. That'll stop the clock with 1.55 to go. So, Deuce, you're Kentucky. You get through this FCS game, early start. You know, all that momentum you had last week. You know, I'm sure, in fact, they were burning sofas around, couches around this town after that win. And things have settled down. You get this one by you. And as a coach, I got to think, like, okay, now we can kind of recenter. You can recenter, and here it's going to be an intentional grounding. They, 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 the refs come in and talk about it. It's going to be an intentional grounding on your 14. quarterback. The ball was placed at the spot of foul. Loss of down, third down. But you get Northern Illinois next week, and then your schedule gets cranked up for Kentucky. You get a road date against Ole Miss, but you get Chris Rodriguez back at running back. South Carolina, Mississippi State at home. I mean, look, obviously Georgia sits there toward the end of the year, and that is, you know, ultimately that could be a deciding game for the SEC East and championship berth. Yeah, you're going to have – it's a stretch right there where you've got to, you know, really be able to show some stuff, but you kind of like where you are as a team at this point. Four-man rush. Pass is caught. That goes to Alexander. Alexander. The offense will stay on the field. The clock moves toward 1.30 to play. David, that whole thing, the thing that you like so much about that schedule, you have a veteran quarterback. You have a veteran quarterback that's kind of been there, done that. So you like every matchup, you know, that you go into your chances in those matchups. Fourth down, wide side throw is incomplete, and the Kentucky defense stands up. And we'll get the football back 
With 108 to play, it looks like that shutout. The first one since 2009. We will step aside for a moment. Back after this. Cats looking to close this one out. Just 108 to play here in Lexington. First ever meeting between the Penguins and the Wildcats. Kyle Sharon in the game at quarterback. To close this one out along with Deep back with it running back. There's D with that handoff. And Kentucky will get out of here with this shutout. Defense looked pretty sharp today, other than there was one sequence, I guess, in the third quarter where Youngstown State hit him a couple of plays, but they came up with an interception in the end zone. Yeah, you, you, you look at the screenplay, that was one where, you know, Kentucky had gotten him a couple times with a couple of blitzes, and they decide to blitz there, and it's just a perfect call, and you just really saw the speed of McLaughlin. But, I mean, at the end of the day, they were able to hold him off the board as far as scoring was concerned. For Brad White, you take a shutout every day, any day, against any opponents. They'll have that today. And a big week for the Stoops family, all the brothers in town, even Mama Stoops makes the trip from Youngstown down to Lexington this week to be with all her boys and uh, their hometown school. Because that'll put a exclamation point on this one. Youngstown State, better days ahead. Kentucky, 31. But for Kentucky, they go to 3-0. Their first win against a an opponent as a top-10 team since the early or mid-70s. And they win it 31-0 over the Penguins. They've got a good squad. I mean, there's a lot that they can continue to improve on. But, I mean, when you go out there and you take care of your business, early kick coming off an emotional week as far as the week before uh, with the win against Florida, a lot that you can improve on, but you kind of like where you're at as a program, you know, as far as you can send, you continue to get better. Youngstown will go to two and one on the year. And of course, Kentucky now will host Northern Illinois out of the MAC next week. And then things get serious in a hurry. Let's go downstairs to Andrea. Coach Stoops, congratulations on the win. I know you have a lot of family here. Let's start with your defense. Held them scoreless. What worked on that side of the ball? Yeah, just really good across the board defensively. I thought we uh, played hard. We strained. Uh, guys were in, the, in their right spots for the most, most part. Competed on some 50-50 passes so overall pretty decent job and will levis with a couple of interceptions still almost 400 yards how would you describe his play uh, he did a really good job he had a couple misses on the interceptions a couple plays he wishes he could have over we got to play better around him you know too many negative yardage plays in the run game putting us in predictable situations still giving up some pressure but there's all things we're going to continue to work on we'll get better when you mentioned getting better, I know you have Northern Illinois and then you go to Old Miss. What are some other areas you want to clean up moving forward? Well, just as I mentioned, I think we're getting creating too many negative yardage plays in the run game. We're giving up, uh, you know, where it's, it's a big difference between second and seven or second and, you know, six than second and 12 or 13. That's that's not good. And so uh, we got to handle that better and get back to being a physical football team and run the ball with some efficiency. Coach, congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Andre. And Coach Bob Stoops, the winningest, or excuse me, Mark Stoops, the, his brother Bob here in town. Just saw him down on the field, but winningest coach in Kentucky football history. Adds another one to his totals. Kentucky wins it 31 to nothing. So for Deuce, Andrea, the rest of our crew, I'm Dave Neal saying so long from Lexington. Let's get you to the studio. Thank you, Dave Neal. Top 10 team of the country.